What's up? And welcome back to Opposites Attract Podcast. This is Sonia Ramirez, your girl, and I'm sitting next to... Miguel Ramirez. What's up, everybody? How was your day? How was your week? How is your life? Going. And today, make sure you guys go to our website, OppositesAttractPodcast.com. When you guys go to our website, you'll be able to follow our podcast there. Uh, you can follow all of our social media. You can watch the podcast there. You can listen to it there. You can send us a message there. Uh, you can also click the support the show tab and see how you can support the show by uh, purchasing things through Amazon. Uh, it doesn't cost you anything extra, but if you click through the link, it helps us out. And uh, you can also help us by going to buymeacoffee.com slash opposite pod and supporting us through there. And uh, we'll tell you more about that a little bit later in the show. Yes, yes. So, so welcome back. Thanks, babe. How you feeling? You back into podcast mode again? Yes, I'm good. You're good now? <laughs> yes. It was weird, the first one. Yeah. Like getting into it. It just, it took a while for me to digest just everything that um, happened in India and just still, I'm still digesting everything that I've learned. And it's amazing how you can play back your life as a movie and pinpoint yeah. all the lessons Um yeah, well, for myself, all the lessons that I've learned and lessons that I knew that I needed to learn um, in order to get to the next level of spiritual awakening or whatever it is that you want to call it. So uh, <laughs> when after the episode, I had asked you if you listened to the episode. Yeah, well, yeah. And I how I sounded. <laughs> You know, like, did it sound like I was crazy? <laughs> Do I sound like a crazy person? <laughs> and um, I decided to take a listen to it again. Did and, you? Mm -hmm, and I took a note because I remember sharing one of uh, my experience in my, uh, meeting a guru. And I said in the podcast that it wasn't good for me. And it was good for me. Yeah. It is what helped me to recognize that there is more to see than what we see with the human, with our human eyes. Like there's so much more out there. And I was thinking about that saying that I used to, or I, I say now, but I used to say, you know, we are spiritual beings having a human experience. And I used yeah. to say it and I got it, but not at the level that I get it today. And I've been on this, I don't know, on this journey, journey of learning more about me, right? And the spiritual realm and all this other stuff. That's why there's going to be a, a podcast because of all the things that I'm learning along the way and the tribe that I have today um, and learning from them. Make sure but you guys go to spiritualsonia.com. It's going to be the new podcast. She's going to <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. Actually, we need to buy that but <laughs> before I was, somebody else does. Miguel is a researcher and I just do shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm like, ooh, that sounds like a good idea. I'm going to do it. <laughs> yeah. Right? Um, if I wasn't that way, I wouldn't have gotten to experience that opportunity being a guru. Right? Yeah. And so... If I would have done the research, I probably wouldn't have went. Yeah. But I was asking you because I know you try to understand me. Yeah. Right? So you look up stuff. Even when I went I, on yeah, my religious journey and I was becoming a few, a very religious, yeah. you started doing your own research. I did. And... Then when it came to me looking more into the spiritual realm, I started, doing, started my research. doing some research. <laughs> yeah. And there's this thing that I do now where I talk, I've always talked a lot with my hands, but the movement is more very fluid. It's more like, ooh, like waves yeah. and right. And I rock a lot. Uh huh. And there's times where I'm doing it and I don't know I'm doing it until I see you mimicking me like this morning when I'm at rocking breakfast. back and forth. Yeah. Like I'm eating. And it, <laughs> it's like it's when I am like just focused and aware and 
all start to rock, just automatically start to rock. And I looked at you and you were fucking rocking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's when I realized that I was rocking. Well, yeah. And you said, that's what they do. Or you said something yeah. like that. Yeah. I did tell you like, that's. What did you mean by that? And why did you say that? Like, where did that come from? Well, because like you said, I looked stuff up and there was, and, and it wasn't, I don't know if it was so much like the rocking back and forth, but I do remember looking some stuff up and there's something about the movement of rocking back and forth, or there's another, it's like one of the oldest, re oldest religions in the world in Turkey, the whirling dervishes where they like spin in circles. But when it's the movement that kind of puts them into like a different state of mind, mm. it's, it's just, it's something that people do you know but i i can't remember all of it like i remember mm -hmm. but i do remember looking it up and there was something about the movement and all that just like when um well there's a couple of things i wanted to ask you but just like uh like you were saying when we when we were going through you know that that time where you were getting into religion or you were just kind of learn you were learning about it and going through that journey and at that point i went to the encounter you know, it's like the, the, the men's encounter, the men's weekend retreat with the that church was, because mm -hmm. people call it different things in different places. But it's pretty much a weekend retreat where people um, I mean, some people get saved. They work out a lot of shit that they have going on in their lives. Mm -hmm. They rededicate their life to Jesus. They, you know, they do all the stuff. But because I feel how I feel and I believe what I believe, I don't I also don't feel a need to go along with anything. You know, like I don't I don't feel a need to do what everybody else is doing. Like, I don't feel that pressure. And I did do research about what happens in some of these retreats. And, you know, like I told you with the music and and the situation, like it does have an effect. It's like it's something that we do that imposes an effect on people. It's like it's and, and I don't think that the church does it like in a malicious way it's like it's not even like they know what they're doing but it's just the power of music and it is something that's very personal so that's kind of how you do it but even unconsciously not knowing you're influencing something you know what i mean it's not 100 percent pure mm. like an experience mm. because it's induced Kind of like when you're giving birth, right? When we're giving, when, when we were going through uh, having a kid at home, right? Mm -hmm. And they were talking about how taking a certain drug will induce the labor. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't be going into labor and having that experience unless you had that happen or somebody do that to you. Just like I watched it. I told you, you know, like there's certain times when the music comes on, when the lights are low. When the mu you know, yeah. the, the words of the music, no, the, the they're power telling of music, you what to I think agree about. with that. There's a lot. And, and there is a huge power Even a perfect in example music. of it was at the time that 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 happened, that was happening at the retreat. Anyway, no, I don't want to kind of go go too far into right. that. But um, in the very beginning of that, they accidentally were playing the wrong music and it was too upbeat. Mm -hmm. And they actually stopped. They they One of the... The pastors actually said to stop the mute. Like, that's the wrong music for what we're doing. You know what I mean? Well, yeah. I mean, if you're going to slow mm -hmm. dance with mm -hmm. someone or, you know, like if it's a, a wedding and there's a daddy. Okay. Well. Daughter dance. You're so, going to put on a well, song. No, no that this, is, this is a daddy daughter dance. But if you're so do you need certain music to talk to God? No, I don't need any music when well, I that's what to I'm God. saying. Yeah, that's what I'm saying is that music is being used to be able to talk to God. But it's done by people. But anyway, um, there was something that you were saying that how at first when you went and you met the guru or like last time that we were talking about it, you were saying that you felt like it wasn't for you or like maybe it wasn't a good thing. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. What was it that made you feel like it or, or say that it wasn't a good thing? It's because I was exposed to what I felt was the dark side of spirituality. Like, I was so new to all this. I, and because of 
what happened within and I felt so out of control. I felt as if, well, I found that video, the spiritual awakening video that made okay. so much sense, right? Feeling like you're having an out of body experience because you're in a different dimension or like I was telling you, I didn't feel human, right? I was telling yeah. you that. And it was scary to me because I was unaware of that. Some people, they're focused on that. They know that they're meditating to get to that spiritual awakening. For me, everything happened so well. It happened natural, but what kickstarted it was me opening my mind, opening my heart to the unknown. Okay. Because of what was said, things that were done, right? The, I didn't even talk about it because like I said, if they want to know more, they can read the book because yeah. <laughs> I don't want to sound like a crazy person on here for those that <laughs> are not on that spiritual journey. I mean, it doesn't really matter anyway, but there were some gifts that were given to me that were not of my energy. It wasn't yeah. a positive energy. Physical gift. Something that he gave yes. you to give to other me. people. Family. Well, no. Yeah, me. for you. Yeah. yeah. Most of the gifts were for me. Okay. And then one was for, for my nephew. Now, if it was just a pendant, a gift that was given, okay. But when I felt the energy, when I felt that, and then someone else felt what I was feeling, and it didn't feel positive, it didn't feel like a good thing. Okay. And then just being able, then I recognize that, wow, there, there is shit that can't be explained. <laughs> yeah. Like there's stuff out there that can't be explained. But what's so crazy is my spiritual experience with my sister. Yeah. That is something that can't be explained. But because it was light and love... I was okay with receiving that. You understand? I didn't, I was scared of the other side of that. I was scared of the evil dark side of that. Okay. But what I realized throughout the journey that that was for me in order for me to get to where I am today, like with my spiritual awakening, I had to see that. I had to experience that. And I appreciate it. And I'm grateful for that experience today. But when I was in it, it's like when you're in the shit, it's hard to be grateful at that time. I, there will be a day where I'm going through struggles and I can immediately connect to my higher self and be like, okay, I see this. I feel this. No. What am I supposed to learn from this and not allow it to sway me, not allow fear or doubt or stress or anxiety to come in for me just to see it. Because whether you feel it's good or whether you feel it's indifferent, it really doesn't matter. Everything is for you. Everything that we go through and I don't I, positive or negative, whatever you want to call it. Right. For me, it's nothing is negative. It's just all for us. It may be an experience that doesn't make you feel good. Right. When someone mm -hmm. continues to, you know, when you go through abuse, mental, physical, whatever it is. A lot of times that pain is a pain point to help you to wake up, to learn a lesson. And if you don't, learn that lesson, you're going to continue to feel that pain, you're going to continue to go through it and go through it until you learn. And some people don't learn. Some people will end up on their deathbed, not ever learning the lesson that they're that they learned, yeah. or that, that they were supposed to learn or whatever it may be. So now when I'm looking at everything that happened, It was a learning lesson that I had to, like, I have to trust myself. And I've heard that many, many times while meditation, while meditating, trust yourself, trust yourself. Why do, why, why do I keep looking for answers outside of myself? You understand? <clears throat> yeah. Like once I, I found out what he was about, I could have walked away and said, you know, not interested. Do you understand? Yeah.
because I was the second one. Yeah. My friend went in yeah. first and I was in there a bit to see what was going on, to hear what was going on and seeing her response that what he said was super true from her responding to what he told her right there. And then I could have been like, mm, I don't good. need this. I'm good. But instead, my curiosity curious, got curious. the best of me. But it's okay because I felt that everything I went through was for me. Like I feel that, excuse me, that everything we go through is for us as long as we learn the lesson. But at the time when I was in it, it was hard to digest. It was hard to swallow. It was hard to get out of because even though I knew what I had to do, I knew what I had to do immediately. I knew what I had to do. I still needed someone to confirm what I felt was the right thing to do. Yeah. And it just comes back to trusting yourself. Yeah. Trusting yourself and trusting God, trusting, you know, just, Yeah. It's a hell of an experience, babe. And it's so, when I listened to the podcast and I said that, and I'm like, wow. Because I've been thinking about it for quite some time. Well, since the podcast, right? Yeah. And I started to look at it in a different light. Instead of, I, instead of looking at it in a negative light, I started looking at it in a positive light. No. And then starting to question, what is this that I'm feeling? Like, what is this? What? Why am I doing this? Why am I feeling this way? Why, you know, why does food taste different to me? Why is it that all I'm wanting to put in my body is, is, is um, fresh fruit, fresh vegetables, yeah. healthy foods? Why is it that I'm dressing like this? Yep. Not that this looks bad, but you know what? I just, it's just. Like, I don't want anything that's constricting anymore. Like, it's just, it doesn't, when I put it on, it doesn't feel like it's for me. I don't know. No. You know, and it's not because, like you said, I was talking to you about this, and you said, well, it's because of the people you're hanging around with now. Well, The people that I hang no, around. There, there's just something that changes in people that, you know, and they get to a different level and they start want to start wearing beads and shit all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm, I'm getting there. I got myself a little obsidian Buddha. <laughs> you know, you got to you start wearing jade and different stones and stuff. But it's not because they mean anything. You understand? Yeah. Like I, it's not well, because it's kinda they like, mean anything. Kind of like I bought the Buddha yesterday. I like, I think it looks awesome. Yeah, you know, it's like this, and 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 also like, it's it's weird, but well, maybe not, but it's just how different religions are looked at. But the religion of Buddhism, it's not a religion. It, it's, it's a way. It, yeah, of it's it's just it's more of like a, yeah, like a philosophy mm -hmm. or a way of thinking. Mm -hmm. You know, so like just wearing a Buddha or whatever. It's just kind of like knowledge, enlightenment. Right. You know, right. that's like what it represents. Right. See, but I didn't know what really any of that meant. Like I'm, tr I was trying to make sense of the energy, the vibration, the, what I was feeling during that time. And I'm like, I don't even know what to look up. Like I was telling you, I don't know what to look up. Like, I don't know. It's like when you're ignorant to, like you feel it, but you're ignorant. You don't have the right words, even how to research it, how to Google it. But then I told you, I said, it's okay. I, through meditation and just sitting with myself, God will direct me. Like I will be directed. The God within me will direct me to the information and sure as shit today. Yeah. Right. I shared with you I, this video. It's called Spir spiritual awakening. And it was explaining everything that was happening to me during that time yeah. of spiritual awakening. Yeah. 
And it started to make, I'm like, okay, cool. Like, I'm not going crazy. <laughs> yeah, it sounds similar to what you were experiencing. Right. Like, I'm not going crazy. All right. Very cool. And it doesn't make, I'm not special. I'm not special. I've been on this spiritual journey since my sister came to me through that spiritual experience is what got me hungry to start to look into religion, God. That's what got me really looking for God. That's what, yeah. that's when I was introduced to religious uh, religion. And then, you know, just getting closer and deeper to self, you know, I started to feel, listen to my intuition, listen to my inner God. And, and then things just started to form and it started, I had to go through another transition. And then I came, became more spiritual. But what does <laughs> that mean? Like, what does that mean? You know, and, there's people that are very focused. I have a friend who's very focused on becoming enlight, enlightened and very focused on this spiritual awakening. And I was focused, but not as focused. Like I wasn't looking up videos. I wasn't looking up this. I wasn't looking up that. It's not like I had a goal or even knew what that goal looked like. And when it happened, I was oblivious to what was happening within me. So while I went and met with her a couple of days ago, I'm sharing with her my story and she's like, oh, that's this. Oh, that's that. I'm like, how do you know about all this stuff? She's like, because I'm constantly looking it up. And I'm like, I wonder if it's better just for it to happen versus having to focus on getting there or it just happening to you. But yeah. it's like whatever, again, trusting yourself. Right. When I get the pull to start looking up the stuff like I've been. And even in that video, what did it say? You're going to get that pull. Right. Yeah. You're going to want start asking questions like, why am I feeling this way? Why am I doing this? Like, you know, and once you become curious enough. You will start. To find the stuff. That you're looking for. Yeah. That's mucho way. I know it is a lot. <laughs> Sorry, guys. No, but um, so one thing I wanted to kind of talk to you about, because earlier in the week, like this, this is something that we've been talking about since you've got back pretty much, you know, because it, it is a lot. You've been back for two weeks now. Doesn't even feel like two weeks. Right. Yes. I mean, it feels like you still just got back and yes, we still have a does. bunch to talk, talk mm -hmm. about and all that kind of stuff. Um, But throughout the two weeks, we've been kind of talking about this, your experiences in India and the guru and all that kind of stuff and there was a point earlier in the week when I had mentioned to you that I I, I don't know if it was well pretty I mean it's come come up a couple of times but I kind of told you that I didn't want to like be responding or like maybe I, I just need to be quiet and just listen to when when you're explaining stuff to me you know, because even right now on the podcast, you when you're explaining your experiences, just like you said, trust yourself. I'm I, I've worked in aviation my whole career like that is not my not my style. It, what we say is trust, but verify that that is what we live by. Trust, but verify as an inspector. I trust you. But guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to go verify. That's what I do. Mm -hmm. So. But at the same time, when you're telling me about your experiences, like I'm thinking to myself almost automatically is like, how can that be? What could that be? Maybe it could be this. Maybe it could be that. Maybe this is what <laughs> she thought happened. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, you know, and yeah. I'm like, how could that be? Okay. Yeah. No, I do. I trust you. I trust that that was your experience. That's what you felt. That's what you saw. That's what you went through. But how could that be? Right. You know, but at a certain point. You're allowed to have your own experiences. And I don't want. To interfere with my. To interfere mm -hmm. with what you're feeling and what you're going through, even though I may not believe understand. it or mm -hmm. understand it or whatever, you know, yeah. like I just. I mean, what do you think about that? Because it's it's kind of tough for me, too, you know. Yeah. Not, um, not tough, like in a hard like, oh, my God, it, our relationship is, you know, but it's just. It's kind of weird to deal with. But what do you mean deal with? 
well, you know, you and all your don't say you know fairy you dust mean? and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Be casting the spells on me. What was like that, Marlon? <laughs> you're, so <laughs> you're so stupid. <laughs> Fucking putting your spells on me. I've been waking up in the middle of the Ooh. night. Sonia's got some smoke going and shit. <laughs> What's changed? What do you have to deal with? What's changed? No, no nothing. No, no, nothing. But I'm changed. asking you, like, what's changed? No, nothing has changed. You just, you've come back with different experiences. Yeah, your house, our house is full of plants now. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. got a lot more I'm plants, dressing which a is different nice. way. Yeah. I'm more loving. Yeah. I'm more patient. I am more calm. Yes, you are. But I'm you not, get, uh, that, that's not what I'm talking about. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's when I come to you and we talk about everything. So, yeah, when I come to you and and I love that you keep it, you know, that you allow me to express myself. Um, At the beginning, you were kind of making me feel a certain way, but that's only because I was allowing you to make me feel that way. And then without me saying anything to you, you came to your own realization. Obviously you just shared it and you shared it before. Like I don't want to interfere with, you know, your journey. Yeah. You know, and I don't expect you to understand what do you think about because all you will you will witness right everything i say come to fruition you will get to witness the miracles you'll get to witness all of it it's beautiful hmm. yeah yeah because it's i 100% <laughs> i now i believe that and i always have and this is what I train on as well, that we are the creators of our life. But I understand that in such a deep level, like a very deeper level. I've said it before. I teach our kids about it. I put pens in their hand and you are the author of your life. You are the creator of your life. No. And I say and I believed it, but now it's like I see the bigger picture all the way around, I see a friend of mine helped me to, I was on a call with him, a Zoom call, and he, we were talking about the event, he was there, and we were talking about what I went through, and I was telling him how great it felt to be home, and I was sharing with him our family and our love, like just, like I told him I am so grateful and I am so blessed. I'm like, my husband is absolutely just an amazing, beautiful, loving man. And I was sharing with him that I w was with Joey and I was laying with him on his bunk bed and just loving on him and just holding on him. And, and then he gives me this stuffed animal Frazier it's a dog and it's mm -hmm. a stuffed animal and we lost uh Frazier a few years ago and it was our real dog yes and um this stuffed animal reminded us of Frazier so we ended up getting it anyways he throws it at me and I'm looking at it and I'm just loving on it and I'm just holding on it and I push take it away from my chest and I look at it and I'm like oh my god this is so cute and I look and I'm like who did this? I noticed that there was a button perfectly stitched where the busted nose was because the nose was, it was like a little leather nose that it had. Right. And it was coming off and now the dog ate it. Something happened. I don't know. And, but when I came home, I noticed that it was replaced with a cute button and I didn't recognize that button. Um, because I do anyways, I didn't recognize the button. I'm like, Oh my gosh. I'm like, I'm like, whose idea was this? And he's like, dad. And I, I was talking to dad about sewing it and dad suggested that we put a button instead. And I'm like, Oh, I'm like, that's so cool. I'm like, you have such a loving daddy. You know that, right? And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, 
where did this button come from? Because it doesn't look like one that I have. And he's like, oh, yeah. he's like, he's like, daddy took me to Walmart and we went looking for the button. I'm <laughs> like, oh, you know, and I'm sharing this experience, you know, with Ben, uh, my friend. And, and I can feel everything shift in my body. But what was a great thing about it was that he got to witness it. And he's like, Sonia, he's like, your entire, he's like, you're, you just instantly transformed in front of me. He said, the way you look, he's like the light. He's like, just everything, everything about you just shifted when you started talking about your family. And he said, congratulations. I am so proud of you. He's like, I hope you realize that you created this. Because I started to talk to him about your transformation. Yeah. And I don't even know if you recognize how you've transformed. Yeah. How different you are today than you were back then. Yeah. And I started to share with him like our past. And that when I started to connect to my higher self, right? All I heard God saying is, love him, love him, like submit. Cause I was going through that reli the religious part and in the Bible it says women submit to your husband. Yeah. And I'm like, what does that mean? Then started looking into that and I'm like, okay, well that's what I'm going to do. Should have asked me. So I just started to love you, right? Just to love on you, to love you and and I started to remember, I started to play back everything that it, I've done to that very point where him and I were talking. Just being more patient with you. You know, when you were feeling agitated or upset, not matching that energy, just... Even now, what can I do to help you? When I see you're stressed, when I see something's yeah. going on, rubbing your shoulders, whatever, what can I do to help you? And when I started recognizing everything and started playing my our, our life back like it was a movie, I'm like, you were so right. And then I realized that if we created this, because... Obviously, you know, once I changed, either you were going to take a look in the mirror and make changes or you were going to go the other way. Yeah. So if we created the life that we're living today, our children are just our beautiful home, just the love that we have for each other, the love that we have for our children, the love that we have for people that we don't even know. This is the beginning of our creation. Like, could you imagine? No. Or I can imagine, and I'm sure you can imagine what more we can create. It's all available. The world is yours, Chico. <laughs> and, and everything in Miguel. it. <laughs> and everything in it. But it was such a beautiful <laughs> thing to to see because I never looked at it that way. You know, when he said, you know, he's like, Con you created this, you created this. Yeah. Because I was talking to him about you and how you are just, how you blossomed. You know, and how you continue to, to, to grow, how you continue to get to a place of enlightenment or spirituality or whatever it is that you want to call it. I call it spirituality. Like a samurai. Spiritual awakening. Yeah. yeah. You could call it whatever it is you want, but I see it in you. And I think, uh, like, the word enlightenment has... Yeah. I, I don't know if that's, like, a spiritual word, because I don't see it... I think enlightenment is... It's just becoming it's, more present. It's becoming living in the now. It's seeing things it's, for what they are. It's when you can... <laughs> yeah. It is what it is. 
that's what life is. Well, yeah, you can. But it's also, it, it's, it's that and it's living in the moment, being in the moment, connecting to your children, you know, when you're playing. and. Well, yeah, it, 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 it's more than that because it's also understanding the connection between things. And, 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 and it's weird because, like, it, it's really hard for me to explain because of how I feel and what I believe because it's almost hard because it sounds like there's a spiritual component at least in my the way I see it like even when I try to explain it like to say that everything is connected almost sounds like a spiritual thing but to me I don't see that spiritual at all yeah just the fact but that I everything That's came funny. from yeah. the same yeah. thing like the earth and like the water that we're drinking right. is water that dinosaurs drank. That's been, you know, gone right. through the clouds and been reprocessed. Like everything that is on earth has been here forever. Yeah. You know, things that died gave life to new things. Yeah. Those things died and gave life to new things. Like everything is, it is connected in one way without it having to be a spiritual mad. I mean, it is almost kind of magical so you when you look at it. When you are, when we are hiking and we're yeah. in nature, that's where, and and you've said it before, like magical. You call it magical. I call it spiritual, yeah, yeah. whatever. It's magical, <laughs> but I don't, I don't believe in magic, you know, but, um, but my, my thoughts on like spirituality, I, I, even still. The way I, be what I believe hasn't really changed much over the last few years, but how I feel about what I believe has changed and also what I feel about religion has changed. But before I get into that, make sure you guys go to opposites attract podcast.com. When you guys go there, you guys can watch the podcast there. You can listen to it there. You can also follow all of our social media at opposite pod, the at symbol opposite pod on all of the different social media uh, apps, uh, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, uh, all that stuff. You can find us at Opposite Pod. Or if you just search Opposites Attract Podcast on any of those platforms, you'll be able to find us or just Google Opposites Attract Podcast and we'll come up on iTunes. Make sure you guys leave us a review on iTunes uh, because that's where it helps out the most. Uh, that'll help us climb the rankings in iTunes and help us get the show out to more people. Uh, but also when you're on our website, you can leave us a message there. Uh, you can also find ways to support the show by clicking the support the show link. Uh, it'll take you to our Amazon link. Anything that you purchase through that link doesn't cost you anything extra, but any shopping that you do through Amazon and you click through that link, it'll help us out. So we definitely appreciate that. And uh, another way they can support the show is? You can go to buymeacoffee.com slash opposite pod if you would like to buy us a virtual coffee or a drink. There you go. And you can also support us on a monthly basis uh, there as well at buymeacoffee.com slash opposite pod. Uh, and also if you want to send us a, a message or you, you can send us a text, you can give us a call, you can leave us a message that we can play on the show. Uh, if you have a question for us or you have any comments, uh, you can call us at 480-331-9846 and we can play it on the show. You can be anonymous if you want to, and, uh, we can answer your questions here. Or if you just want to give us a comment, we can also play it here as well. You know, while we're sitting here talking about our differences, how, you know, I'm a spiritual butterfly and you are a mad scientist. No. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. There's probably couples that are watching this that are probably thinking, like, how in the world do you guys make this work? No. Yeah. Well, and that, that kind of goes back to what we were talking about before the ads, before you guys went to opposites attract podcast.com where I was kind of saying, like, I don't like, I had that conversation with you because I do feel like when you would ask, when you would bring something up, I would be like, well, what about, or maybe it was, and I would just catch myself. And then at the end of the conversation, when we would walk away from each other, and I would be thinking about the conversation that we had. I didn't feel good. I didn't feel good because I don't. We've had conversations where I'm like fucking beating you over the fucking head with shit. Not you know literally. what I mean? 
<laughs> no, but like you'll 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 be like, well, yeah. guess what? This happened, and I'm like, yeah, well, have you heard of this? And what about this? And fucking so and so says that this is that, and it, and and you know that at a certain point, it's like you know what? Just do your thing. Like this is your everybody's allowed to have their own their own experience, and I don't want to take that away from you. You know, whether I feel that it is what it is or not, or doesn't matter. We can all have feel how we feel. You know, so it's respecting. Yeah. The and, other person and. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. And that is something that even though I felt like I did feel, I walked away feeling a certain way. I didn't have to say anything or voice anything because you came to recognize it for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Because now you are more aware. Yeah. Yep. So um, one thing I, was, I wanted to mention was before, well, even before we got together, I think when we first met, I wasn't, I wasn't spiritual, really. I wasn't religious. I think in, when we first met, I probably would have, if you would have asked me, I might have said that I believed in God. I don't even think that came up at all because I wasn't I'll, even I'll, there. I'm just saying 15 years ago when we first got together. 16. Yeah. 16 years ago when we first got together, if you would have asked me, do you believe in God? I might have said yes. Right? 16 years ago. And if we would have asked you, you would have said yes. But both of us, the way we thought about God and religion and everything was way different back then than it is today. Right. And... Over the years, at some point, I started just like questioning everything, questioning, I mean, questioning everything, really. Well, I think you not, started not just, to question when that happened, that when I had that spiritual yeah, experience with Yeah, I sister. started looking stuff up because that's that's what I do, like I said. Um, but, yeah, it. so I started questioning everything, and little by little, I started just one like just wondering be like why why can't i ask questions and why aren't there answers to these questions or and then you just start looking stuff up and i was just like you know what i don't i i don't find enough information here to like really make me believe so i don't believe right and at first it was kind of like with jesus and the bible and all the other religions that are out there and it was hard. Like at first I was just kind of like, well, maybe Jesus wasn't even a real person. But then you hear so many people that are so much smarter than I am that have looked into this and like they dedicate their life to this stuff that some some really smart people would be like, no, he might have been actually a real person. And there there's actually probably a better chance that he was a real person that that he wasn't. And it's like, OK, well, then what the fuck does that mean? You know, so if it was a real person, but they wrote this book and then and then little by little the way I see religion and spirituality, even Jesus, Muhammad, like all these different people throughout history, mm -hmm. like the way I see it has changed. And like I said, like my belief hasn't really changed because I don't believe in the supernatural or in magic or in God or in any of that stuff. But I do believe that maybe Jesus was a real person. And, I, and, I, and I'll always say maybe because I don't know. I haven't looked it up enough to... To, and, and nobody really is going to know for sure. But the way I, I feel now is maybe Jesus was a person that was teaching everybody to believe in themselves, that they have the power within them. Just like you said, when, when you say it sounds spiritual, that you can create the life around you. But when I, when I talk about it, I don't say that in a spiritual sense. The decisions that you make are going to create the life around you. We're saying the same thing, just using different words. But it's not in a spiritual <laughs> way. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's not in a spiritual yeah. way. If you make shitty decisions, you're going to live a shitty life. That's just what it is. So, yes, you create the life around you by the decisions that you make. At a certain point, you're not a baby anymore. You're, you're an adult. So, yeah. And so, yeah, maybe they were, they were people that were trying to teach people these things. And just like politics today things get twisted around when somebody says something 
and they take off and run with it in a different direction or they say something else. There's also like history of the Bible and all these religious books being influenced by the politics of that day, Mm -hmm. you know, but they have these people. So my thoughts have changed over the years. Like now it's more like, yeah, I think maybe they were Jesus, Muhammad. They were teaching people. They were people that like today were, they, they understood they were enlightened. Right. And they were trying to teach people how to be enlightened that in, instead of splitting people into groups and making them fight, how we all came from the same thing and we should work together. Right. And like everybody knows when somebody's a lot of times when somebody's trying to bring good shit together, bad shit happens. Mm-hmm. Where the hell's God when that shit's going down? I'm just I'm just wondering. You know what I mean? God's it, not. Cause, cause how it, do you see God though? God is. Babe, because if, if Jesus was such a good guy, mm-hmm. how could you allow him to get crucified? If Martin Luther King was such a great guy and he was fighting for all these great things, how do you allow him to get assassinated? If Abraham Lincoln was such a great person fighting for all these great things, how do you allow him to get assassinated? I'm just. It is what it is. With the light comes the darkness. There's a shadow. We all have darkness within us. That's another and, and, thing that. And that's what I'm saying. Like, if you're religious, you can like, then you, you try to find a way to rationalize why Martin Luther King got killed. It was God's plan. That's why Jesus died. It was God's plan. It was Martin Luther King. You know, that was God's plan. But. I think it is what it is. That it's just life, you know, anyway, but we can have differences of opinion and feel differently about even important stuff and respect each other's views. And I think that, or I know that's a lesson in itself for our kids Because it all starts in the home, right? It all starts in the home. And if we teach this in the home, how to be okay to agree to disagree, to still love and respect, I think that we would live in a more peaceful world (laughs) if we all taught this at home. And it all starts in the home. You know... This is something that's so complicated, like the enlightenment thing. Sorry, I don't mean to cut you off. But like to try to explain. Oh, yes. What that is. And like I was saying, when you can see life for what it is, I think that's when you're. And I don't think enlightenment ends because you keep learning. You're always learning. You're always learning new things. But it's almost like the humility knowing that you don't know. Or knowing that there's a lot more that you, that you don't know than you actually do know. I think that's almost, that. that's also when you get to a, a level of enlightenment, I guess. I don't know. Not to say like I don't want to fucking, you yeah. know, toot my own horn or shit like that. But what I'm saying is when you can, when you can see the different religions and see issues that it causes. Yeah, when division. you can see homeless people for what they are. You know, for the troubles that they have. It, it, it's not a, a small thing and it's not little things. It's when you can look at the politics and see them for what they are. The games that are played. When you can look at a country and or look at a map and you see all the lines and, and know that those lines aren't real. That it's just land and that people drew those lines on maps. When you can see the games that we play to divide each other. And when you can see how even though we play these games to divide each other, how we're all actually the same. Right. Like you were saying, like how we all come from the same place, how we all want the same things, how we all want to love our family and love our kids and do meaningful work and leave something behind. doesn't matter where you come from. Yeah. We all want peace, joy, and love. But I think that's 
kind of what enlightenment is, is when you can see the world for what it is. The fucked up shit and the beauty of it. And both are both are okay. What I mean by that is it is what it is. So there's that, but there's also the spiritual side of us. I don't believe that when my time is up, that it's just done because we are energy. I feel that there's more to that because of the energy that I feel within and around me. Like I feel there's levels to this stuff. Yeah. 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 I don't, and I, I don't know. <laughs> Just, there you go. <laughs> so anyway, um, one thing that we wanted to get into that I was I mentioned last week, and we wait till the very end of the podcast to get into it. But I wanted to ask you that. So you you were saying at the end of the last episode that the last few days that you were in India, you went to a Christian. It was like a Airbnb, right? Right. It was. I don't know a town. Outside of Mumbai. It, well, not outside of Mumbai because it is Mumbai, but it was on the outskirts of Mumbai. Okay. And there was a Christian community? Yes. So I want. I was just kind of wondering, did you notice a difference between Christianity in India and Christianity in the United States? Nope. No. They had Jesus statues everywhere. Yeah? Yeah. They had Jesus statues everywhere, but they also had... Mary, the Virgin Mary, too, which is Catholic. That's Christian. That was in. That's still well, Jesus' yeah, mom. Yeah, that's true. So, um, but yeah, they had them everywhere, and um, they did chant every morning. The Christians. Yeah. Which is different. Right. <laughs> that's different. Okay. Because they so were it's chanting like, in the morning, chanting in, the, and and maybe the chants were prayers. I just didn't understand maybe. the prayers because just it wasn't a, in. It's a different English. culture. Yeah, you know, but people there were more loving. Like it just, I don't know. <laughs> because at that point, I was seeing everybody in a different light. Yeah. Because I was no longer full of fear. Yeah. So I was seeing people in a different light. And I was feeling. You were feeling different. Right. Yeah. Cool. But we went to a Buddhist temple. <laughs> yeah. And that was really cool as well. The pagoda? Yeah. Yeah. So on your way back from India, you stopped in Japan mm -hmm. on the way home. Yes. And you had a really long 15-hour layover in Japan. Dude, it was nuts. And you had a chance to hang out with my cousins while you were there. Because I have a, a couple cousins. Well, I have one cousin that lives in Japan, right? You have Kathy and, and Chrissy. They, they both, both, they both live Japan. out there? Mm -hmm. They were both okay. there. I thought, yeah. well, I know they were both there, but I didn't know they yeah. both lived there. Yeah, they both and live I, there. I thought one of them lived there. Mm -mm. So you were able to meet up with them in Japan. Yes, it was super cool because that was very unexpected, right? Like I, yeah. I knew I had a 15-hour layover, but my plans had changed because at first I was going to L.A. and I was going to spend some time in Beverly Hills. And then that changed apart. every yeah, just, yeah and so i'm like well i have a 15 hour layover and that when i called you you reminded me because audrey reminded you she told me that we had cousins out there and so as soon as i heard that i reached out to them and here we went we just had got everything planned and they're like i got everything we're gonna take you out you know within that 15 hours and and show you japan and it was so first of all japan is so clean yeah. So clean. And it was so different. Like I just came from India where it was just so polluted, right? Just yeah. dirt, just, yeah, you know, to 
Japan, where the air is crisp. <laughs> that reminds me. And everything is so clean and well kept. And or everything is organized, like so organized. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Their bathroom system. <laughs> I showed you that Man. South Park uh, Japanese toilet yes. clip. Yeah. Oh, I fell in love. I'm like, what? I mean, you sit on the toilet seat and the toilet is already, the seat is heated. And then you hear music. It's like a waterfall. It's like encouraging you. Yeah, it's like waterfall. And then when you're done, there's, you know, the whole setup for the bidet and it's warm water. Nice. And it cleans the front and the back. You get to choose which one. And then it blow dries you. I'm just like, wow. This is freaking crazy. <laughs> this is great. So, so Sonia almost like stayed and lived oh, at the airport yes. in Japan. Yes. So Miguel's cousin, ah, oh, they're my man, they're my type of humans. <laughs> they are my type of humans. Yeah. Right? They're What'd very you guys do? just loving, full of light, and just absolutely hippie like just like me yeah and um so they pick me up and they're like well we know you've been on a long flight so i hope you're open but we thought that it would be cool to take you to a bathhouse yeah i'm like okay i'm thinking to myself like okay well i'm gonna freshen up like Whatever, what, I don't know. Yeah, what were you thinking? A, a, That's a what I was house. thinking. I'm like, okay, a bathroom. It's like house. a big ass bathroom. Like, yeah, like I'm thinking, okay, well, I'm freshen up, brush my teeth, like, you know, like freshen up, okay. Yeah. And so we're walking and we, you know, and I'm just looking around and I'm like, oh my God, this is so great. And they are so cheerful. Like, they're so cheerful. They are so cute. You know, they're holding hands and telling me how great I am. And, <laughs> <laughs> just like yeah. being them Your loving kind of people. self. Yes. And um, so we walk into this place and they're giving us, telling us, you know, where the lockers are and all this other stuff. And I'm like, okay, this is interesting. Okay, whatever. I'm again, go with the flow. Very spontaneous. Yay. <laughs> yeah. So then we walk in further and I'm like, oh, Okay. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, wow, so we're doing this. What the third doing? time I see you guys and we're going to get butt naked together. All right. Okay. <laughs> you know, and. So what did you get? What was it? That's It was a public bathhouse. Exactly what it sounds like. You go in, you cleanse your body, right? They have soap and, and, you know, like little showers, little baths where you're sitting down on like, you know, like, I don't know, a bucket or a, something to sit on. And there's yeah. a water like a faucet spout. or a spout, whatever. And you're filling up a bucket with water and you're pouring it on you and you're cleaning up. And then there's a, you know, a lady next to me and she's like, would you like some soap? And she hands me and she's naked too. And she hands me over the she soap works there? and no, she's there bathing. We're all bathing oh. together, babe. <laughs> okay. I'm like, like, like there's like some naked lady handing out soap together. And, shit. and it's so funny. Cause I'm thinking to myself, man, you have grown so much. I'm like we need to go to one of these bath because, houses. <laughs> because in my, in the past, I wouldn't have had the confidence to just, take off all my clothes i mean these are your cousins and yeah. everybody you know everybody else and they're all women you know but everybody else and they're just like was it just women or yes, was it everybody no it was just okay. women yeah no the men had a separate thing going on well i'm just well this is japan this is not europe i was just thinking well in in europe they're pretty free but i don't think you see like dicks out in europe yeah i don't know but i'm so, just saying maybe yeah that's different. you know just feeling like really just like going within myself and just feeling so proud and confident to be able to just all right well let's do this thing you know take yeah. on my clothes and ooh, yeah you know they're like oh you guys not, you got some nice boobs there i'm like oh thanks like i'm <laughs> this I'm like shit like <laughs> Oh shit! You know, but it's just <laughs> nice yeah. cack. No, totally. he's fucking in the you over in the I'm guy's saying? room. But um, it was very free. You see the and balls on was, that dude, <laughs> and it was great to recognize that about myself. Yeah, being able to be that free to just let go, like not having any judgments for myself or those around me. 
Yeah. Like just taking it all in. So I just went through all kinds of learning lessons That's throughout funny. this entire journey. And oh my goodness, they had like this, I don't know, they call it like a blue lagoon or whatever, right? Where it's like um, a stream. Not like it's a, you know, like a jacuzzi, but not a jacuzzi. A hot spring? It's rocks. Yeah, I guess oh, a okay, hot spring. Okay. I don't know. And I get into, after I cleanse my body, we go into this hot tub it doesn't look like a hot tub there's rocks and i don't know something special about the water i don't even remember i think it comes from a stream it's 45 I think that's what degrees they do. like it's just like anyways so i get in and i'm like oh my god like i'm like this feels so good and immediately i get into med i'm just like oh yes and i'm sitting there and we're all in our own little you know space and just being one with ourselves and I just close my eyes and spend some time with me. Yeah. And I am loving this. Just, I am loving this. And I feel my body like coming down because yeah, of the jet traveling. lag, the yes, all of it. And I'm like, Oh no. I'm like, how am I going to walk around Japan and get my energy up? And I just quickly, I, I recognize the thought and I'm like, just rinse yourself off of cold water, Sonia. Right. Yeah. And then immediately dismissed the thought and got back to my meditation and I'm just in it. And I don't know. Time seems to fly by when I'm meditating. I don't recognize time. So I decided to open my eyes and I see your cousin Chrissy panting like a dog. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, oh, my God, this is so hot. <laughs> and I looked at her. I'm like, you kidding me? I'm loving this. Like, this was your idea. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I sit in the sauna for like 45 minutes. Like, this is my jam right here. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but after a while, like I saw, like they were like, yeah, I'm getting out. So they, they got out first. I stayed in there for a little bit while they were like, and then, and then I got the bucket of cold water and just started tossing it over me. She's like, dang girl. Like, yeah. You know, just to wake myself up. But that was a really, really cool experience. That's and then awesome. they took us, um, took me to some park where I got to see beautiful cherry blossom trees. Nice. Yeah. That's oh, awesome. it was so nice. And um, they had a Buddhist temple there that we went to as well. And how was we, that different than the one in it wasn't. India? Was it similar? It was smaller. I mean, a lot smaller, but. The similar? Yeah, very similar. Okay. Yeah, very similar. Yeah. It was a great experience. That's awesome. I, at one point, because uh, we were going to, we went shopping. We were going to get Joey some Pokemon cards. And I started to feel myself come down and like come down bad. Like I was crashing. Like I started to feel sick. Like just like, ooh, this is not yeah. good. I feel myself kind of spinning. And I'm like, oh, I can't. I like, so I ended up telling them, I'm like, is it okay if we go back to the airport? I said, because I'm coming down and I'm not feeling well. Like I, I need to try to get some rest. And we were walking like yeah. Japan, you freaking walk, yeah. right? Like you walk. And so, um, we ended up getting back a few hours earlier and I just laid out at the airport, at the airport and just try to get some sleep there. Yeah. But it was great. I was so excited to be home. It's almost like I was holding all this in. It's like when you're going through a really tough situation, but you have to stay strong for those around you. No. And then once you get into your safe place, you can let it go. You just let it all out. That's how I felt when I saw you at the airport. That's how I felt when I hugged you. Yeah. It's like you're finally back. Oh, no, for me, it was just. <sighs> like you, you felt safe again. Yes. Like it's just. I was going to I wanted to ask you about that. Like, did you f did you get that feeling also like when you landed in the U.S.? Yes. Or when you were like on the plane headed yes. to the U.S. Yes. Back, like back to the United States. Yes. Yes. It's crazy like that. Like just traveling a little bit and you don't even have to go to someplace crazy, but it'll, it'll give you some appreciation for being an American, you yes. know, and where we live. Right. Yeah. Because yeah. when you're outside, 
they're not from there. Right. It's like what if you allow your thoughts to take control, <laughs> you can get into a really dark place. Yeah. Right. Yeah, guy, dudes are always thinking fucked up shit. So like when you're when I when I think about stuff like that, I think about that show that I would watch, uh, Locked Up Abroad. You know, like people getting arrested in other countries is like they don't even fucking know about you over here. You're done. You know. Yeah, and I've had that thought probably twice in India, and I recognize it right. and I dismissed it. But it's real shit, though. I mean, yeah. that's that's. I mean, yeah. Right, but you, but you can't have to be keep alert. Your, no, you can't. Right. But you have to be alert. You have to be aware about that. And yeah. 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 But sure. we're, we are definitely super happy that you're back with us. And I know the kids are super you, happy. Man. You've been back for two weeks and it feels like you just got back. Yeah. Just. Yeah. I have a deeper appreciation just for life. Really just for life. And beads. <laughs> <laughs> I notice it's funny because I recognize my heartbeat. Yeah. Is it's it's weird, but it's slower. It's it's more centered. Yeah. I don't even know what that means. It is though. It, it is. <laughs> it's more centered. I am just way more relaxed. In every way. Yeah. Even when I was hiking, I recognized that. Yeah. Like just taking in the beauty. And this is when we were like on, we were hiking up one cave, which is incline. Yeah. And even though we were going at a steady pace, Audrey and I, I felt calm the entire way up. It's like my heart rate stayed at a certain rate. The entire time, I just felt so much at peace and so much calmness, like within me, and just a deep connection <laughs> to everything around me, including her. Yeah. And it's such a deep appreciation for life. Yep. And with that, make sure you guys go to our website, oppositesattractpodcast.com. Share it with the people that you know. When you go to our website, you guys can watch the podcast there. You can look at ways that you can follow us. You can send us a message. You can give us a call at 480-331-9846. Thank you for being with us. Yes, thank you guys for your love. Thank you for your support. And thank you for watching Opposites Attract Podcast. Where we get better. Together. Bye. Bye.